I hate to say it, but the Supermoon Yellow Yeezy 500 is pretty much the exact same sneaker as the blush colorway that released a couple months earlier. Obviously, it's the same Yeezy 500 silhouette, so of course the construction hasn't changed, but it's so odd to me that Adidas and Kanye would release such a similar colorway to the one that just released. You could argue all day that it's a yellow hue and not a tan like the blush colorway, but let's be honest. It's the same exact shoe. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the not so new Adidas Yeezy 500 in the Supermoon yellow colorway. Before I get into the actual materials and construction of the sneaker itself, I think it's pretty interesting that I originally wasn't planning to buy this shoe and the only reason I ended up picking it up is because I walked into Billionaire Boys Club and they had a full size run just sitting. So when something like that happens, I take it as fate that I was supposed to have the shoe for retail. In full disclosure, yes I sold the Yeezy 500 blush because I just don't like the shoe that much and to be honest, Honest, I think I like this one a little bit less, but to be fair, the Yeezy 500 blush I didn't get for retail. I grabbed it on the day of release, so I paid, I think, about 300 This one I got a couple weeks after the fact, and yes, I copped it for retail, so that's the reason I was more willing to pick it up, because I was just so surprised to see it sitting there. But with that out of the way, here it is, the Adidas Yeezy 500 in the Supermoon Yellow colorway. Jumping right into the sneaker itself, like I said before, the construction hasn't changed since the Yeezy 500 blush. I don't find this sneaker particularly visually attractive, however the one saving grace is that the materials all over the sneaker are actually pretty nice. Around the toe of the sneaker you've got this nice plush suede in sort of this tan yellow color, super moon yellow if you will. Continuing up on the shoe you've got this thin leather panel that runs up to about the top of the tongue of the sneaker and divides up different panels of the shoe. Just beneath that what seems to be the base material of the upper you've got this pretty widely spaced yellow mesh. The mesh is pretty heavily padded so the shoe is a little warm, but honestly the mesh feels pretty premium for what it is. Continuing up around the eyelets of the shoe, you've got these oval shaped suede panels. These areas I don't like too much because they sort of give the shoe a bug eye look, which I'm not a huge fan of. Weaving through the eyelets, you've got your matching yellow oval laces. One compliment that I had about the shoe on the blush colorway, and I think I have about this pair too, is that even though they're using a ton of different materials on the sneaker, they actually did a really great job of color matching each area. In manufacturing, when you're dyeing or coloring different areas, it's really hard to sort of hit the same hues or the same tones as the other other materials. Like meshes take dye very easily because they're such a thin material so it's super easy to color, but moving over to something like the suede because it's so thick and it's so dense, it's definitely harder to dye a material like suede so the fact that everything is pretty much the same exact tone is pretty impressive. Underneath the laces you've got the synthetic leather panel in sort of a figure 8 shape. Just beneath that you've got the tongue also in super moon yellow as you'd expect. Moving inside the shoe, you've got the super plush and very well padded yellow sock liner. This is another strong suit of the Yeezy 500. The entire upper is extremely well padded and it's also pretty wide, so if you're a wide footer, this might not be a bad way to go. A lot of the dad shoes nowadays feature heavily padded uppers, which I really like because it sort of feels like pillows around your feet. Yes, it can get hot, but it's not unbearable and if you're using the shoe more in the fall and winter, this is probably a good way to go. Rounding off the inside of the shoe, you've got this yellow ortholite insole with both the Yeezy branding and the Adidas branding. As for fit, the Adidas Yeezy 500 does seem to fit true to size, so if you are trying to grab one of these pairs of sneakers, I would probably suggest going true to size. Again, for you wide footers, this is a more widely fitting shoe, which is great if you need it. If you don't and you're like me and you have narrow feet, it just gives you a little bit more room around your toes. Continuing back on the sneaker, you get to these three separate sort of padded mesh pods. Just beneath those, you've got this 3M piping that wraps around the outside of the shoe. The piping is stitched onto this sort of wavy leather panel, which kind of gives the shoe a more organic look. The entire thing sort of looks like a living creature, like a bug or something, which I don't really think I like. Like. It creeps me out a little bit, but it's an interesting look. Just beneath that, you've got this super moon yellow mud guard that wraps from the toe to the heel of the sneaker. Moving around to the back of the shoe, you've got more suede, leather, and mesh panels. As you move down the sneaker, you get to your Addy Preen foam midsole, which is borrowed from an Adidas basketball model. It's comfortable, it's soft, it's nothing unbelievable, it's definitely not boost, but it's not a bad ride. Just like the upper of the sneaker, you've got these super organic and wavy shapes running all the way around the midsole of the shoe. And then finally moving to the bottom of the shoe, you get to your non-marking rubber outsole. Overall, the Adidas Yeezy 500 Supermoon Yellow is not a bad shoe. Yes, it's not my favorite, and I'm honestly not even sure if I'm going to keep the shoe yet, but 
it's not a bad shoe. The color is a little funky, and it's definitely harder to match with most outfits than the Yeezy 500 blush, but if you like the shoe and you're looking for a more out there sort of colorway, this is not a bad way to go, especially because resale is pretty much non-existent. But that pretty much wraps up the video for today. I'd love to know your thoughts on the Yeezy 500 Supermoon Yellow and whether you grabbed a pair for yourself. So make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. Also make sure to check me out on IGTV, which is just my Instagram, at RealSethFowler. I've been doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff and unboxing, so if you guys wanna see more content that isn't uploaded on my YouTube channel, make sure to check that out. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.